Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Daniela, and welcome to another episode of Crafting with a Cocktail. We are having a winter storm warning here in New Mexico, and it's chilly, and nothing feels better than having a nice cozy afternoon, if it's snowing, than a glass of wine. Yes, this is not a super special cocktail, but it is what fits the bill for today. So, just in case you want to watch me pour a glass of wine, let's skip to that clip right now. See you in a minute. All right, guys, all you need is a wine glass and some wine. I prefer Chilean wine because, of course, that's my family's heritage. So all you're going to do is take your wine and pour it into your glass to your liking. If you only want a little, have a little. If you want a lot, girl, do it. And this is why we're drinking wine today. Nothing says, let's have a snow day, like, let's craft and drink wine. Gross. On to the craft. So our first craft is going to be decorating some blue light glasses. So I got this cute pair of like translucent pink cat eye blue light glasses from Amazon. And it came with a nice little set of supplies. So like a bag to hold it, a cleaner, something to test to make sure it works, and a little screw in case it ever comes apart. So um, I will link that down below for anyone who's interested. I did find one that I found was a reasonable price, but obviously pick a pair that you like. So what we're going to do here, oh, don't forget to sip your wine. What we're going to do is just kind of jazz them up a little bit, make them a little cuter. Um, and you can do this in any style at all. You don't have to follow what I'm doing. Before I do anything, I do need to clean them off, make sure there's no oils on there. So I'm just taking a little alcohol prep pad and wiping that down. Then I'm going to bring out my bag of bling um, and pick out what I like from them. So once you kind of sift through and decide which you like, you can start arranging it. Again, this is just my personal style, but you could decorate yours however you want. You do not have to follow exactly how I made mine. I ended up choosing these little pearl beads um, that are kind of an off-white or a creamy color. I believe I got them from Walmart for a book. And I've decided that I kind of want that focal point of that bigger bead to be right on the corner. So I first try by using some Rapid Fuse glue. I just buy this because it's a little cheaper than Gorilla Glue and it usually works quite well for me. However, I end up deciding that this is too slip and slidey and I end up using my glue gun. So here I am deciding I needed to plug in my glue gun to glue these down so that they're not rolling all over the place. Um, I will say that I do use my other glue later to stick on some smaller jumps, but after a couple hours it dried kind of white and crusty. So I would maybe recommend, recommend actually just using the hot glue gun in the first place. So while we're waiting for that to warm up, you can check out my cute nails I'm a little too proud of that I did myself. <laughs> just felt the need to show those off because I was really proud of them. Now that our hot glue gun is hot and ready, all we have to do is glue a little dab onto each corner and attach our pearls. Here I'm showing that you that you could obviously use whatever decorations you want. They could be bing and blingy or small and subtle, but again, just make this to your own style. I kind of liked the vintage look that I went with. Makes me feel like I'm Frenchy from Greece, so I stuck to that. So again, here we are. I am just going to put a dab of glue onto the corner of my blue light glasses and stick on my pearls one by one. Again, I'm just putting one in each corner and then I'll decorate with some smaller gems around it. All right, we are looking cute so far. And now we are going to move on to our smaller gem. So I have this little wheel of bling here that I got offline off, um, I think AliExpress actually. And it's got all sorts of different sizes of clear gems that are actually meant for nail art, but I thought their size would be perfect for this. So I end up deciding that, again, I'm going to skip the hot glue gun for now and use my um, Rapid Fuse glue. As I said earlier, it does leave a little bit of a white crustiness around it, so be careful. And if you have a detail hot glue gun, use that for sure. I'm using a little wax pencil to pick up my rhinestones and place them where I want them. So I surround the pearl with two stones that are slightly um, 
Well, they're slightly smaller than the pearl, but they're bigger than the next one that I'll do. In order to get just a little tiny dab of glue where I need it, I don't want it to blob all over my glass. So I'm just taking a little toothpick, sticking it into the nozzle of my glue, and then putting it where I need it. Again, I use my little wax pencil to pick up my pieces and put it around there. So this one that's going below the pearl is, again, in between sizes. It's actually slightly smaller than the upper one, but it just felt like it fit here where I needed it. Of course, do it to your discretion. Whatever you like will look perfect. Here, I'm just going to speed up a bit. My last few touches, I end up putting, I believe, three rhinestones on top and two on bottom. I'll have to check once I get there. Actually, huh, I'm wearing them. I can count now. Yep, three on top and two on the bottom of the pearl. So, again, just using my tiny wax pencil to place them where I need them and using that toothpick as well to place the glue wherever I need it. The cool thing about this little bling dial is you actually just kind of rotate the top and that way it only opens to the section that you need of the size of crystal you need. So that's what you see here when I'm kind of spinning it around. Look how freaking cute these turned out. I absolutely love them. They totally fit my style and my obsession with pink. Again, pick whatever glasses and decorations you want and it'll look great. All right, number two is that little heating pad or neck warmer around my neck. This super helps because I've noticed during virtual schooling or virtual work that I get a lot of neck and shoulder aches. So this really helps to just kind of relax those muscles. I'm using this cute blue and white pair of socks from Target, some beans and rice to fill it. But you could, of course, use that white pack I just showed you and do some cute embroidery on it as well. I am now pouring a bag of pinto beans into my sock. I'll leave a link below. There's all sorts of different fillings you can use, and they all have different smells and textures, and I found it really informative. Um, these beans are just from Dollar Tree, and then I decide I don't have quite as much as I need, so I do end up using the rice. My personal favorite is um, somebody gifted me a heating pad that they had made with some dried corn. Not popcorn, not the same thing, because popcorn will pop. Um, and it smells so good because it does actually smell like popcorn when you wear it. Um, so that one's my favorite, but I couldn't find that. So again, I'm just using these beans and some rice I had at home to fill it up. I'm going to fill it up about three-fourths of the way. Do not want to fill it up to the top because then it will be too stuffed and it won't be moldable. So again, don't fill it to the top, just three-quarters of the way. All right, next we are going to use some thread. I chose to use this navy blue thread because it matched the colors. And honestly, like I'm a sucker for color. I really don't mind that it's going to stand out amidst the um, white end of the sock here. So I take my blue thread, I put it through the eye of my needle, and I make sure that I have um, threads on both sides. And then I tie a knot at the end as opposed to just doing one little piece of thread, if that makes sense. I've got it double layered and then I tie a few knots at the end. I really want to make sure that they don't come through the socks. So I think I ended up tying about three knots in there. Here you can see my little knot on my thread. There it is, nice and focused. And once you've got that, you can just start at one end and start sewing. You could do this a variety of ways. You could obviously use a sewing machine, but I wanted to make this easy enough for someone who may not have a sewing machine. So I just stick my needle through there. I hid my knot on the inside of the sock so it wouldn't poke out. And then I um, thread few a few times and make another knot just to be secure. I don't know why, but I feel like I just don't trust myself sewing. So I always like to make knots of knots. You could absolutely stitch this the um, traditional way or you could do um, over the edge, which is what I ended up doing. Um, I go through the sock and making sure that my loop of the thread is going over the top of the edge here. Sorry guys, it's a bit out of focus. I'm still kind of working on figuring that part out of filming, but here you can see I put my needle through, make a little loop, go back to the same side, and make a little loop. Again, you could sew this whichever way works for you. Once I went all the way to one end, I actually ended up deciding to do the same method going back the other way. And the reason I did this was to really make sure that my ends are secure, especially since I have rice and rice is really small and I don't want it to fall out the bottom of my um, heat pad. So again, I just do that all the way to the other end. 
once you get to the end you're of course going to tie a few knots again i do this several times just because i don't want any of that rice to fall out so i'm making a few loops and knotting it as well as doing some manual knots too which you can kind of see here so i do a few of each of those then i just cut off the excess with my exacto knife or scissors and I'm forming it into the shape I like. When you guys use this, pop it in the microwave for just one minute at a time. That's it. Try not to go over. We don't want any burning or any foul smells. And here I am modeling my comfy new heat pad. <laughs> we have finally made it to our DIY or craft number three, which is a name plaque. I love this idea. I actually called my friend who's been working virtually since I think March and is continuing to work virtually and asked, you know, what would make it more fun for you? And she said, a name plaque. And I thought, you know what? You could put any name plaque, any superlative you could ever want. So I thought that was fun. So here I'm just cutting a piece of form board from the Dollar Tree. You could use it to make it to any shape you want. Mine's about nine inches by two inches, and I am just cutting it to nicely crisp up the sides. Then I am just going to make sure to get any shreds off the edges. I did end up using this previously for um, packing or something, so it has tape on it. So I am just cleaning some of that up. But as you'll see later, I do end up covering that up with some um, craft paper. You guys, I am so excited because I'm using my Waverly paints and wax for the first time and you know your girl is a little too bougie for the regular wood look. So I had to create my own pink faux wood. This was inspired by the Peppermint Cactus's channel. She has amazing faux wood projects, but I needed mine to be pink careful not to spill antique wax all over your own phone <laughs> because uh, that sucked. When you're done cleaning your dirty phone off, you can use a sponge. They use different kinds of sponges in different videos I watched, but I happened to have this round flat bottom sponge that I've used for face painting and I used it in my cropped sweatshirt tutorial and all I did was dip a bit into the antique wax the clear wax into some of my metallic rose gold color to start creating my wood grain which looks amazing my boyfriend was like whoa that actually looks realistic I did end up using my poker from my Cricut or my um gosh what is it called that little thing that helps weed it a weeding tool I used that to poke some holes. You could also use a toothpick, which will work just fine. And I created this um, vinyl phrase with my Cricut. You could use stickers, you could use paint markers, even a Sharpie would work great. I'm just adding pressure here to make sure all of my stickers or vinyl are sticking. Again, I don't know what it is, but I struggle so much with my Cricut. I totally need to take a class because I don't know what I'm doing wrong that everyone says it's so easy. Um, but then I have it, queen of the world. I mean, if I can pick my own title for the day or for the year, why not be queen? Then I'm taking this super amazing gold paint marker that I get at Walmart. It's often sold out, but when I find them, I do get them. It is just the most shiny, gorgeous shade of gold. It does not come off fake like a translucent gold paint or anything. And I take that and just go around all my edges to add an extra accent of color. I ended up getting a little too lazy and pressing down and all of that gold leaked all over my plaque. So I tried scrubbing it off. I used a little bit of an, my alcohol pad to get some of that off and it was just not budging. So I did end up having to repair it. So here I am just kind of dry brushing some more of the pink on and I used some of the antique wax to dry brush some of it. And it did end up adding more texture to my name plaque or title, which I really didn't mind. Now I'm using some of my excess foam board, which you, as you can see, I did end up making more of that fun faux pink wood for a future project. I don't know what yet, but I am just using my X-Acto knife to cut out a little piece that will help it stand up in the back. Something that one of my professors taught me um, in my communication design class was never to press super hard on something thick like cardboard or tag board just to go over it lightly over and over again with an X-Acto knife to get a nice cut. So I don't mind using that patient method because it works for me. 
Now I am clearly taking some craft paper. I traced out my plaque and I am cutting it out. I want this to look a little more finished so it doesn't look so janky in the back where you can see all of that tape and all of that extra gold paint that got stuck back there and um, just kind of neatening up. So I'm using my hot glue gun. This is a tip I learned from Unicorn Dust Designs. You guys have heard me talk about her 800 times. If you don't follow her, you should. But I am just hot gluing this piece of craft paper to the back to look at more, make it look more professional. Then you're going to take your little extra piece of foam board that we cut earlier and figure out where you're going to place it on your plaque. I'm using hot glue to attach it, plenty of it because I don't want it to fall off. And I'm going to just kind of angle it where I want it to be so that it's still angled up a little bit so that if somebody were hypothetically walking to your virtual office, they could see it facing up at them. I also take my hot glue gun and reinforce it on the top of the little piece of foam board and on the bottom, which you can see here. This part I didn't end up covering with craft paper because honestly, it's just for me and I thought it would be fine to have that little extra bit of glue. And I'm going to take my scissors and just trim up anything that's hanging off the sides of our name plaque. Okay, since some of that gold that spilled smudged all over my letters, I am taking a Sharpie and just covering this. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is kind of a fun textured metallic black um, vinyl. I just felt like it added a little bit more fun to this project. Look how fun these turned out, you guys. It really helps to feel good while you're working virtually. Um, whether it's physically or mentally or whatever. If you enjoyed these or you enjoyed me, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye, guys!